Hey, this is Retired Geek Woman Adventures with Rhiannon Ken Seed. It's retired Slow Play Part Number 14. And we're going to continue right where we left off. And uh, there's you see a few saves on here, but the one that I'm sharing with you is uh, I'm in year six on this one. And we've got our little puppy there. It's Druda. De, Druda? Druida. How you say that? <laughs> it's Druda Day, and that means we need to make sure that we go by and uh, give our offering. At the time of this video, um, they did change it so that you could no longer give the brownie bowl um, the uh, dandelions. Oh, I hated that when they changed that. <laughs> Because it was a great use for it. And what else are you going to use them for? Uh, prior to that, you used to be able to give them also to your pigs. And you can't give them to the pigs anymore either. So I'm not sure why they changed that. I don't know what the reasoning was behind it. I just saw that it changed. And I was like, oh man. Uh, that was a great use for that. Because you end up with hundreds of them. Uh, so anyway. It's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out one way or the other. So we're going to make our offerings today. And... I'm, I kind of, you can kind of look at these yourselves. Uh, you have, uh, you can see a Druda and Frail, and you have Boons and Curses. So if you haven't seen this before, basically you pick one and you're going to have a curse that uh, kind of counteracts the boon that you choose. So I'm kind of looking at these, looking at which ones would be the best. Eventually I'm going to have a really good system down so that I'm choosing the right ones at the right time. For instance, I love the one where you can use your, uh, cut down the, the uh, weeds and get seeds, which is great. So the week before I'm planning to plant, um, then it would be a good time to use that one. Uh, it, and then in the week that I'm planning on trying to have babies would be a good time uh, that the one that says babies more likely. Um, so um, I've been just kind of rambling here while I'm at the same time trying to figure out which one to use. And, you know, it's uh, you have to do at least one. You can do up to three if you want. So I'm kind of weighing each of these out and looking at them like, what do I want to do? So I don't want my curses to be too awfully bad. Um, some of them are, are kind of funny. Like there's one that turns your children into frogs, uh, which is kind of amusing. <laughs> but I don't really want my children to be frogs. So I don't have any children. At this point, I am not married in the game. Um, so we're going to pick this one. Uh, a chance for fruit to yield two, and we had the boon for it. You have to have, you see the stars along the top? There's two, three, four, and five stars. You have to have the right fruits with the right amount of stars to be able to make the offering. So you're kind of limited on that if you don't have any five-star stuff, for instance. So this one I had a three-star. Friendships are better um, in the sun on sunny days. So obviously I don't have any children. Uh, babies more likely, don't have any babies, I don't have a husband, um, you know, so you can kind of look through here and pick your own. Fish spawn rate, oh boy do I love fish spawn rate, that's an awesome one. What this does is for someone like me who goes boncos over fishing, it increases that spawn rate, you catch two fish sometimes, there's more fish in the water and sometimes you catch two fish. So that's one of my favorites. But I can't do that on the weeks I'm trying to have to have the babies and we're not having any uh, potential for that since we don't have a spouse. So off we go into town to check on how things are doing. And I, if you haven't seen a previous episode, and I wish you'd go back and look at them if you would, I have one shop that I own, which is the apothecary shop. When I first started uh, thinking about being a business owner and I asked on Discord, there's an, a uh, link to the Discord, official Discord channel down below. Um, oh, also another change that just happened is they combined, there were two cabinets that were showing inside the apothecary. One was for materials, one was for uh, things that were on the shelf to be sold. They combined them with the last update. So that's what you're seeing. Um, so anyway, I was told by the very helpful people that the, uh, the apothecary was the easiest one to make a profit. And this is proving to be the case. And what helps those pro the profit is two things. First is the, um, 
the ingredients, like if I'm running around and I'm finding primrose and things like that, grab them and then you can take them from your inventory and put them right on the ingredients uh, for crafting. So that is very helpful. Vial of slime obviously is, can be used. So there's lots of things that I can use and I wanna try to look at that before I place my order. When I place orders, it takes right out of your profit. So you kind of have to keep an eye on that. You can see I've got Bowing Nancy. I only have seven left of those. Eventually, right now I'm trying to shoot for 20 of everything. Then I'll move it to 30 of everything just to make sure I have plenty. And at this time, I have limited hours that my shop is open. Eventually, in the fu far future, I may want to expand those hours. So... I'm just trying to make sure that I have ordered everything I need to order. I'm a micromanager, and so you can see I made 26 profit yesterday, but I did order almost 100 brass worth of stuff. And I was looking at what sold that body older one. It, I make I made a, I sold seven in a week and 122 profit plus. Um, I was just amazed at the reputation I'm getting on that particular one. So I don't know if I can do just to figure out what to make or not. Um, you know, how many did I sell? Well, I don't know. It depends on how many I had. Plus the employees go and make things or make fake ones if they don't have the ingredients. And I think that the employees might know the what the ingredients have because I've seen they've sold things that I don't know how to make or that I don't think I have the ingredients for. So on the other hand, I use a spreadsheet and there's a link in the description down below where the spreadsheet shows um, what ingredients, like for instance, bravery. So I'm looking, I found out that um, catnip has bravery and I knew that um, anti-sick for the blood few and then the healing, there's lots of them. Parsley has, I think, is it parsley? I had to look at my spreadsheet again as there's there's so many that have healing attributes and um, I wanted to use one and there we go parsley so uh, this is a cream if you haven't seen it before you put your pot on there and turn that up and then you can see your ingredients on the left how they start to steam up I love this detail here so it uh, kind of starts putting stuff into your little pan there you want to get it till it's just about halfway but not too far over and then you want to turn on the wax and put the wax in it. So it's a runny concoction first. The wax will make it th thicker. And it tells you a little runny and now it's good. And now it's perfect. And get it off of there. Ugh. I hate that, that it goes too far. So obviously I needed to put a little more ingredient in it before I put it on the wax. And um, so that turned out to be a three star. Those are very good sellers apparently. Um, you can see how much I have on uh, on the shelf so far I've got two of those um, so there's there's a number of things that seem to sell a lot on the other hand I just make what I what I have the ingredients to make what I know how to make um, and part of it is the um, proverbs that tell you what an, a certain ingre what a certain uh, ingredient attributes are and part of it um, is just kind of guessing like for, I needed something that needed charm the very one of the very first times I made anything I needed something that needed charm well I assumed that charm weed had a charm attribute I guessed at it and I was right so I don't feel bad using the spreadsheet that I have I would be able to make so few things what I started to tell you where this all started was the that's one reason why I think the my apothecary is successful in making money is that I'm making potions ahead of time and putting them on the shelf to sell. Because whenever a customer comes in, they tell the counter person, the employee, whoever's standing there, that they have they need a remedy for fill in the blank, whatever's wrong with them. They have an upset stomach or whatever. Then if the potion that is needed is sitting on the shelf, then the employee can turn around, grab it, sell them, and out the door they go. Reputation goes up and everything is good. But uh, if they have to go make it, it takes longer, which is why um, you want speed as one of the attributes of your employees. And I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to this. Um, but so there's a lot that go kind of goes into it or there's nothing goes into it. F relationship. Look at that friendship. 100% friendship with Lucy Arrows now. And that's supposed to make her happy and more effective as an employee. And of course, she's going to tell me something about a sword. Uh, I think that's a late in game that they're kind of hinting about. And I think that the uh, Grandmasters hint about that at some point as well, too. So 
as you can see, we are making progress. And also, side note, when you buy a shop, anything that's around the outside of the shop is fair game. So, oh, look at that, an iris right there on that tree. That's a perk that I picked um, that I have an a tree or something. Each of those shops can do this. Uh, there'll be a tree or a stump or something that will give you an item. So in this case, ingredients. So uh, someone wants a carrot. Uh, Warzel Scrumpy wants a carrot. Easy peasy. I should have a hundred carrots. <laughs> and here is the general store. And, you know, I'm still thinking about this. It's like I have the money, but I'm not sure that I want to run myself out of money. Um, it's, I'm really debating this at this point because when I buy it then it's going to take me down and I need to make sure they have money to pay the employees if it's not profitable because the worst thing you want is for your employees not to get paid. That is a really bad thing. So we're going to uh, take a little trip here. We're going to head up to Loverwood. I got a reason for this and we'll see what's happening here. I don't like to do too many spoilers. Of course, I haven't played this game hardly enough to know the spoilers. Um, you can see this map has not been opened yet. I've got two of the three map stones. Uh, this is a relatively new game for all you new people that are watching this. The game came out the first week of December of 2022. And so if you're looking at this recording, close to when I did it, then it's only been a few months. And any game that's only a few months old, everybody doesn't know everything. You know, it's it's unlike when I was playing, let's say, Stardew Valley, which I also play and is also a, a currently running playthrough on my channel. Um, it's been out for seven years, so the wiki is filled in. There's, there's n almost nothing you can't find out on the wiki about Stardew Valley. Well, it, this game is pretty new, and it's a little bit obscure still. People don't know much about it yet. And I think a lot of people, there's a lot of reasons for that, I think. It can appear to be very complicated, um, and people get intimidated by that, especially casual players like myself who want something that's a little bit simpler. All right, white rose and a poppy. So we got to write rows just to finish this comp this thought because it, before it goes away from my uh, short-term memory brain is that um, I think a lot of people are intimidated by uh, games like this where there you know there's so much to it or there can be so much to it. Well, for me, it's like yeah, there is a lot to it, but I don't have to play it all right now. That's one of the beauty beautiful things about this game is that. Once I turn, my character turns 50, I have to choose an heir, and that heir will uh, inherit the stats, the farm, um, everything, the money, the shops, they inherit everything that I'm currently doing. So there is no huge rush for me to finish everything with this character. So I have to kind of keep that in mind, or I want to keep it in mind, that I don't need to rush. Um, and you can see that uh, all of these videos on my channel, all of them that are on there, I put in the title, Retired Slow Play. And there's a reason for that. I don't want people to come in here and think that I am going to teach them everything there is to know about Kinseed um, in a few episodes. That is not going to happen. What you're going to see is me enjoying this game, exploring this game, and just really having a wonderful time with this absolutely delightful game. And I'm finding that I just, I wanna play it more and more and more. And it's just, it's just so much fun. I mean, every second of it. So I would like to thank you for following me along as well. And just give a plug if you have not done so, please subscribe to my channel because it really helps YouTube like me better and it also lets me know that I'm doing something that other people find interesting or worthwhile. And so I do appreciate those subscriptions more than you could possibly know. That's the first thing I do every morning. Sitting at my counter having my breakfast, I check my subscriptions. So I went the wrong way. It's like, oops, I didn't mean to go there. I'm at the burial grounds in the veil. And I'm looking for ash. I know that... It, when you're a child, Ash lives with his parents, um, but then after you become an adult, he has moved somewhere. 
And from things I've read on Discord, he seems to move, uh, I think, a couple different places. So I can see that he's supposed to be living here in the barrel grounds. It's kind of creepy. But he, he does live here somewhere. So I'm looking for him. In the meantime, it's like fish. <laughs> There's fish here. I love fishing in this game. I've said that for 13 and a half episodes now. Um, it is just one of the funnest things, which is so funny because I do not like fishing in games. Um, any other games I've ever played, I just never have. This one, I can't stop fishing. Uh, what the cool thing about that, though, is it can be a profitable thing because um, I'm going to, when I have the money, buy that general store, and I'm getting really close to that. Um, and you can specialize your stores, and one of the specialties for the general store is a fish market. And so this fishing addiction that I have, I can um, uh, just sell all of the fish that I make in the store. And so I don't know if it'll be a profitable adventure. Um, we'll find out. I know the apothecary is, uh, which is very different. But uh, I'm looking for Ash. Where the heck is he? <laughs> Ash, I have something I want to give you. Where are you? <laughs> I want to talk about Ash for a minute. Um, it being... If you want to marry a male character, I went up to check his parents' house and he is definitely not living there. If you want to marry a male character and you want them to be roughly close to your age, I mean, I'm you know, 18 or whatever here now, but if you want them to be close to your age, there aren't very many male characters. When you become an adult, there are very few that are uh, your age. And so I find that to be quite frustrating, uh, that you're more or less pushed to this. If that's what you want to do, who are your options? I mean, I pulled them up and looked at them all. And it's like, well, okay, uh, options are very rare. So um, I, I guess I don't like that. I hope, I hope in the future they give us some more um, characters that are closer to the age. Um, some people, I mean, looking at Discord, I see that. A lot of people don't pay any attention to the age. Um, they don't really care. They're, and so I, I don't understand. That's just the way I am. So I'm different, I guess, than a lot of people. I care about that. I don't, you know, I don't want, I know that, and like, for instance, I'll give you another example, Stardew Valley. I play, uh, I role play myself as much as I can on anything that I'm playing. Um, and I can create a character that has gray hair and all that stuff. And then I am a senior. When I say retired, slow play, I'm retired, that's a word that's my vocabulary every day because I am retired. Uh, no, that's boots. Uh, but um, I, in, so in, in Stardew Valley, I don't want to marry a child that's been riding a skateboard, if that makes any sense. I'm going to interrupt myself here. I'm going to give a gift to Ash. I'm going to give him that uh, white rose that I found. And you'll see what he says when you do that gift yes for you the marriage ritual has to start on the first day of the week so it's not today <laughs> so i messed up and i'm going to pull that the the book up of uh i think it's a guide a ritual of marriage uh let's see if this is the right one on soul's day goddess day you must pick the white rose do not have don't do anything with it yet um and on moon's day which is monday the next day so i can give it to him tomorrow so uh, again in stardew valley i wanted to the only person i ever uh choose to marry is harvey because he looks less like a child and he's a doctor so he's older so in this game i i think that you're kind of pushed towards ash and i know a lot of people don't marry him because of that it's like no i'm going to choose somebody else so that's who i've chosen though um, just because of that, it just, I didn't see anybody else that kind of comes close. Um, so, okay, here we are again, thinking about this general store and wandering around and going, oh, what to do, what to do, what to do. Uh, I am going to buy, you see that recipe there? I went ahead and bought recipes. I will do that anytime I see them because they are relatively cheap. And what if you want that recipe? You see what I'm saying? It, it's like, um, it would be, maybe that's the only place you can get it. So I do want to make friends with Inkabod Moon. Um, so you can see I have one heart. I'm just going to keep working on this relationship. Because um, if I do, he's already working here in this general store. And if I buy the general store, it I don't know. It seems like he'd be a good good person to run it, don't you think? 
Uh, so again, I'm tossing around this idea. It comes with all the stuff that you see here that uh, can be already sold. It's already on the shelves. So I'm going to sit and think about this for a minute. It'll take me down to 214 brass, but I'm making really good brass on the other shop. So I just really wanted to give this a good long thought. I was kind of concerned. Uh, my employees have been, now it's after 6 p.m., my employees have been unhappy. Oh, I made 53 profit today, even after buying almost 70 uh, brass worth of stuff. My employees are still unhappy, and I'm still not sure why. I'm not overworking them. Uh, you can see here that, you know, I'm, I try to average, you know, blend it out, um, but they're still unhappy. Now, I've heard three different things can play into that. One is that you're underpaying them. One is that you're overworking them. And then thirdly, your relationship with them. So I know the relationship is not where it needs to be, but I, it's not that bad. I mean, they're not, they don't hate me. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm just not sure what is going on. So I just kind of rearranged this a little bit. Um, I had noticed that uh, Lucy was working a double shift, meaning six hours. So I thought, you know what, let's kind of back that off a little bit. So uh, just kind of make some changes. Hopefully that will help. They are being paid what they require, which when I first started playing this game, was testing it out, you could give them one brass and they were happy as clams. And when I, when it, it of course, when you start with them, they're not unhappy and they just stayed happy. Well, now when I restarted the game, when you start to hire anyone, they're unhappy. So... And I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if it's a bug. I don't know if there's a reason for it. You can see there that I had quite a few things on my shelf. And boy, they sure are selling it. So that's a good thing. And I was thinking, what's on here so that I can make other stuff? Uh, I do want to do my regular disclaimer that I am not a sound engineer. <laughs> my son is. That's what he does for a living. And so his he does he's a lead sound engineer for a major gaming company. So his his videos would have perfect sound with no background noise or anything like that. And while I try to minimize that as much as possible, I do have two beautiful kittens. You can see pictures of them on my community tab. I posted that not too long ago. So go check that out. But uh, they like to hang out in the same room that I'm in a lot of the time. And they, uh, we have uh, storage bags underneath the bed that, that are uh, got blankets and things in them. And they love to walk around on that. So that's one thing you're going to hear. And sometimes um, they get into tussles. One of them uh, gets a little bit overstimulated and, start, and starts biting too hard. And then the other one is growling and hissing. So you're going to hear some of that sometimes. I will do my best to cut a lot of that out. Um, so I just kind of wanted to let you know um, exactly what's going on uh, with the sounds and stuff like that. So what I did there is that I just kind of went over everything. I went over the inventory that I had collected and just making, I'm going to make a few more potions. It's, I, like, I cut down the hours of the store a little bit so that I can get in here more easily and craft a few things. So this store closes at 6 p.m. and I happen to be right across the road uh, debating about the general store. So I thought, you know, I'll come over here and uh, make a few things that I know how to make. This is abdomen and it is a powder. You may, not, may or may not have noticed if you haven't watched any of these episodes before that there are three different uh, types of stations. They look, and you can walk over to any of them to make either a powder cream or potion and it will bring up the correct station. So you can stand at any one of these stations and it will bring up the correct one. So this is obviously a powder and we're just using the uh, mortar and pestle. We chop up the ingredients and use the mortar and pestle to kind of grind everything down. And there's a brand new abdomen for the shelf. And so uh, what I like I did, like I mentioned, is that I did a spreadsheet and I'm looking at the ingredients, trying to decide what do I want to make, uh, what do I have to make, and try to make a good variety. Because I never know what's going to sell, you know. It's like um, trying to figure it out. <laughs> and those knobs eyes are coming in handy. Uh, we picked those up in the woods when we did our, our fighting. And so we're going to use those. And right now I'm going to make, it's called... Uh, Khan's table salts 
and I just I think they're so funny some of the names that they have for things are pretty funny and uh, this is going to be a potion and potions use this thing I don't mind using this a lot of people complained about these mini games on the apothecary I'm fine with it uh, I don't have any problems with it it you know it's just a matter of getting it's like anything else getting used to it but uh, this one the potion you put the ingredient in pull the handle down um, then you take the green tube pour it on the bowl you just drag it to the bowl and you got to watch your temperature and then you have to count do counteract Whoop, I guess I'm gonna go the other way then you counteract so if you look at the chart white needs black put into it um, so you just put the counteracting agent in and I like it that there's different ones of top some of them you squirt some of them are shakers some of them are like um, remind me of pastry tubes and this one they're little tabs so it's kind of interesting and sometimes I put too much in and if you do you have to kind of counteract it it's like Whew, okay you got lots to watch here but I don't mind these I think they're I think they're kind of fun um, so it can you just I just think it's kind of fun. I don't know why that I'm that way. But I know a lot of people complained about it. So I'm sorry if you feel that way. I think it's kind of fun. And so making these potions again, I believe is going to des definitely help my profit. So I try to get in here every single day if I can and make as many potions as I can. And so uh, again, I'm what I'm doing right now is checking my chart. Um, this link is in the wiki and that uh, I'm sorry this link is in down below of the description of my videos and say okay I have ingredients for digestive and constitution and even though they I can't see what they are because they have question marks that's because I haven't found the proverb yet so I just checked my chart and I had the items I needed to make this potion so again I'm looking for variety um, and I don't know. I don't know if your skill goes up. I, I really don't know. I don't think there's an apothecary skill. I'm really not sure um, what affects that. I didn't study any of that um, when I was starting my game and when I was choosing, you know, the, the very beginning, if you start playing, you, it's the very first episode, you'll see this. Um, you have, um, I, I believe it's Pot asking you questions. And supposedly giving you extra stats I don't know if those stats go up um, or how they go up I haven't read or researched Ooh, a three-star potion that's nice um, so anyway uh, this is what I'm doing every single day in the evening or in the morning depending upon I try to do it in the evening times because I have more time the morning I, try, I always try to get back to my house and get sleep even if it's an hour just to save my game and kind of remind myself to fill that brownie bowl and if uh, I, I only have like a couple of hours from the time I wake up to get in here and make stuff before my employee comes in. Sadly, when the employees come in, you cannot come back here and make stuff, which I don't think is fair because you could do that on the blacksmith shop. So it's really not fair in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. So irregardless, it, I try to come in here at once a day and I am at this point working at um, coming in the morning I'm sorry, in the uh, evening times after the shop closes. Because uh, usually I, I want, you know, half the time I hang out here until very late. Um, so, again, what I'm doing is going through the ingredients, going through the, the list and saying, okay, so how much have I got now? What do I have? And I've got a, quite a mixture here and it seems like a sufficient amount of stuff. And I'm looking, again, if you will, if I look back at the past year at the profit on this shop, I mean, it's pretty daggone good. That is showing you one week worth. Um, so um, that's, that, to me, that's not, it's not bad at all. I'm doing really, really well with this shop. It's making money every single day. Um, my priority for the next few game days is going to be the marriage thing. And I have to share with you, I truly thought you had to be 20 uh, to be able to be married. And maybe it was that when they first, this game first came out. But I found out I don't have to be 20. I can do it right away. And I wanted to get started on that family. That's one of the really fun things uh, that I'm looking forward to. It, playing this game is about the families. Uh, because you can have up to three children. You can... Um, they are babies for a while and then I have never played past that baby stage so I'm just really excited about that part of this game and um, 
being able to raise the children, see what happens when you raise the children. And so that is that is something I think is going to be so much fun. And it's very unique. I've never seen a game where you have heirs that you raise. At least I haven't. They may be out there, but I've never played them before. So I'm very excited about it. So I keep making the mistake of coming down looking for Grave Lilac um, on the wrong season. So there is one season that there isn't any Grave Lilac, at least one that I know of. And so I had looked at my book. It's like, okay, what, I, don't have, I don't have a proverb that tells me. And I, you know, the, the wikis are not been really filled in yet. So I, I didn't know. So I thought, okay, what can I do instead of uh, standing around looking for grave lilac that's not here yet? Grave lilac is a really good ingredient to have in your shop. And also it's sometimes I think a requested quest item. Uh, so I, I really wanted to make sure that I had some. Instead, I'll come here and get some three star coin tail. That is awesome, and I got a double, so that is even more awesome. So again, I thought, okay, it's midnight, I'll take a quick look, and there's still no grave lilac. And sometimes right there, there is sometimes a mushroom, a rainbow mushroom, and so um, I thought I'd check there and see if there was one there, and there was not. Uh, so kind of really wasting my time, but if I find I'm wasting my time, I look for a place of water. <laughs> it's like, okay, where can I uh, get whatever it is I'm looking for. Um, fish, fish, fish. Look at that. Two, three. Oh my gosh. All these three star coin tails, which is just awesome. If, I mean, at some point in the, I don't remember if I had enough, uh, to give to twig. Uh, if, and when I do, then I can sell them. They seem to really sell really well in the shop. So I'm going to hang on to them for my shop or I can go to like, right. If I don't own the shop, I can go to the shelf and sell uh, some of them. They have a low amount of uh, brass at the shop. Ooh, saw a primrose over there. Primrose is another item that we need a lot of. So the more I can find it in the wild, that's the less I will have to buy. So just kind of looking around to make sure I wasn't wrong about that daggone grave lilac. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, let's see, today is the 8th. No, it's like, wait a minute. It's after midnight. That's the first day of the week. I can give Ash his do the next thing. He's sound asleep and you can still give people things when they're sound asleep. You can talk to them when they're asleep. So this is funny. So I'm going to give him that. Oh, that's the most romantic thing that has happened to me today. Well, I hope so. So in the marriage guide, if you read it, it tells you there's things that you need to do each day. Um, so... Once you do that task, then the task says await the next day's thing. So you do something every single day. I mean, it is definitely a ritual. It's not just, hey, I want to marry you and we get married. Um, it, it, there's things you need to do each day in preparation for marriage. So that's what I was doing. I thought, right, I'm here. I forgot about it. He lives here. It's after midnight, so it is the next day. So I've done the task for this day that I needed to do and so now the next thing will it'll show up when it like when it turns midnight again it will show up and say here's what you are to do next and just do each thing if you mess up you'll have to start over again so that's kind of a bummer uh, so just don't mess up if you're if you're going to get onto the marriage ritual you need to stay on it talking to pot and you know why is he so rude he says rude things I have not figured this out. Uh, let's see, a gift from Lucy, because we're big, we're best friends with Lucy now. She's gonna give me, oh, a recipe for turnip pie. Thank you, Lucy. Here's our account summary for the past week. Look at this. Or we made a profit of 468 and we gained 2201 in reputation. So that is another really good reason to have own businesses. You get good reputation. So uh, the way I look at it, as long as I'm not losing money overall and I'm not losing money, you can see I have almost, I have almost 700 again, um, then I think it's really worth it. When I come back to the, to, uh, the farm, if you will, this t at the, in the evening times, I try to come over and check for whistle root. I come over here and try to see if there is a um, nightberry on that bush over there, and there wasn't. And then I also fish up, I wanted to see if I can get any nighttime fish. There's a moonfish sometimes that you can get 
from your ponds. There's other places to get them, but you can get them after around midnight or so from your own pond on your property, and they seem to be pretty valuable too. Uh, so, oh, got one. Moonfish right there, a two-star one. Is that awesome or what? Um, so again, I have uh, the increased fish um, uh, spawn rate, I guess. So I'm having a lot more fish and I'm getting doubles um, sometimes. So that's really cool. So I'm just going to collect those in, in anticipation of owning that shop and eventually um, uh, specializing as a fish market. And there's reason, there's goods and bads to specialization. And when we get there, we will talk about those more. Uh, in the meantime, we're just going to collect all this fish. Look at all that. Even weed skimmers they are not worth a whole lot, but at least it's inventory for the shop. So I'm, I'm really getting sidetracked here. It's 5 a.m., but it's like, oh my gosh, there's fruits. Let's get these fruits off the tree. Um, when you have a spouse, um, you can assign them tasks either on the farm or you can send them off adventuring as well. So there's lots of things that you could do with them. When your children grow up, they can do the same. Thank you so much for following along. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me know I'm doing something other people find valuable. Really, the most important thing, though, is I want you to have a wonderful rest of your day.